people, welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, bringing to you today uh, an episode, an episode about the Spartan race, an episode about the second worst defeat I've ever endured in my life. Now, a lot of you who are probably tuning in for the first time, my first ever massive defeat that has brought on an insurmountable amount of success occurred back in 2005, Sunrise Regional Championships, but yesterday was pathetic. On so many different levels. But you know what? I actually thought about it and I said, you know what? Let me break this down little by little. Because I cannot just, st- I can't stand around and blame other people. I could do that for about 20%, but this all comes back to me. Now, to be honest, I wasn't even supposed to do this race. All right? But then someone came about right before I canceled my ticket and he said, hey, man, you can come with us. We're going to rent a van. And you know what? I should have went with my instinct. I should have canceled that ticket before, but I didn't. And it resulted in just pure chaos. But you know what? If we could just focus on the Spartan race itself, this is what we have to do. What areas did you not do well in? That's what you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself if you were slacking off. You have to ask yourself if you gave it 100%. And you know what? First and foremost, I'm going to give the biggest shout out Ah, man, I forgot their name. See, I need to get better with these names. I got to watch Jim quick. My boys, who actually live in this condominium that I live in, Aspire, okay, out there, out here in Sauthorn, and there's another one that's just right next door. It's called Parkland Grand. Yeah, that's my boy, okay? Two guys from my, uh, London, or I think South London was Southwest London, something like that. And you know what? They helped me push myself to the maximum. Now, I'm feeling the effects this morning. I feel that my back is very sore. It could be from the massage that I got just roadside right out there in one of the worst cities in all of Asia called Pattaya. I can't believe that. But anyways, we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on what happened yesterday. So guys, here we go. Let me break this down. I went with four, I went with four other people. I hate running races with people who don't have willpower. I hate running paces with people who say, oh, just enjoy, just, you know, have fun, have fun. No. I did not pay 2,000 to 3,000 baht to just have fun. To just shoo shoo is what they say in Thai. I'm going to bust my ass because I know when that pain comes, that's when the growth comes. So guys, to be honest with you, the first KM, I was running, but I was constantly looking back. I was never able to get in a rhythm. Why? Because you had a bunch of, you had a couple of people walking. You had a, a parent, a, an apparent marathoner. Which I thought was bullshit because this guy, uh, yeah, he fell apart. Now, of course, okay, marathons and, you know, tough mutters and Spartan races, they differ from each other. I understand that. I understand that. But the thing is, this guy had no heart behind anything. And then you had the other guy who had a year to do cardio and he did no cardio. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Okay, Arsenio. Next thing you know, these buckets and these goddamn sandbags, they were no joke. I've never seen, I've never carried something so heavy before in my life. I swear. And we had to walk probably 200 to 400 meters with this damn big bucket of rocks. And so I had so much pain after that. And of course, after I finish, here I am. I'm waiting and I'm looking behind me. See, it takes me out of a rhythm because I'm waiting on other people. And it's like, oh, well, we have to wait for them. And I'm like, guys, uh, God, that's the alarm. My bad. Anyways. That's when I made an oath to myself. I said, you know what? Right now, I am not going to wait for these guys anymore. But I continued to wait because then it came to the second KM mark. And that's when it continued to get worse. Um, because then there was a sandbag. And these sandbags were 60 pounds, probably about 35 kil- uh, kilograms. And you know what? I think that was the first one, and the bucket of rocks was after that. I tried carrying the bucket of rocks on my shoulder, but then it started messing up my traps. I tried carrying it, you know, you know, from the front, I dropped that bad boy about five different times. You know what? This is the first time ever in a race that I saw buckets of rocks and sandbags out there on the course but because people had given up. And you know what? I was looking at those sandbags, and I'm like, those people have given up on their dream. I said, Arsenio, I can't go through with this. You're going to finish this. You're going to go through all the pain in the world to get through this. And then it was at the 3 k.m. mark. And I'm like, dude, maybe I'm suffering from heat exhaustion. Maybe my stomach, I was so thirsty at one point. uh, I didn't drink any water before the race. And I mean, I was just very, very ill prepared. And so here it is. 
we get to the water, okay? We get to the water uh, obstacle. It's probably around the 4 or 5 km mark. And I saw this guy. And he looks so familiar. And I'm like, what's up, man? And I was like, dude, I'm just, you know what? And I think he knew me before I knew, you know, before I could recognize him. Because he was like, hey, man, how's everything going? I was like, hey, man, pretty good, pretty good. I didn't even know who he was. And so here I am. I run towards, uh, we, went, we get into the water. And then me and these two guys from London, fucking cool, man. Excuse my French. These guys were awesome. We were chatting it up. The water was so cold that it numbed all the pain that we were going through. This was probably the most brilliant part of the Spartan race. Because after the two most difficult obstacles, they put the water so you could actually jump into some really, really cold water and get all that pain out the way. And so I'm like, dude, this is really awesome. And of course, it, it was in like a reverse. So we actually went in um, reverse from what it was last year. So anyways, uh, we ended up doing that, and I ended up running with these guys. And then finally, probably after about 400 to 800 more meters, he's like, yeah, man, I see you at the condo all the time. I'm like, oh, sh-. And, you know, I started laughing. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm suffering from, like, heat stroke. I don't know what's going on out here. I can't focus. I can't, I can't do a goddamn thing out here. Huh. So anyways, I just went with them. And you know what? That was pro- I think I saw... I saw the guys who I was running with, who I came with before, but I'm like, man, because one at one point, he was like, okay, guys, man, let's go, and I looked back, and I saw these guys taking their sweet-ass time, they're like kids, they're like girls, taking their sweet-ass time on these obstacles, and I'm like, guys, this is bull, this is why I never wanted to go with them to begin with, and I said, fuck this, I'm breaking away from them, and I'm just gonna make up an excuse that I waited, you know, probably 15, umpteen minutes down the road, waiting for these guys, and you know what? After that, I established myself. Because it was that rite of passage, and me looking back, and hearing the voice of two guys who are willing to push themselves, they're like, come on guys, let's get this dog in, let's go. That's when I took the rite of passage. I literally went with the people who actually had the willpower and wanted to succeed in the race versus people who were just a shoo-shoo, enjoy, enjoy. And so I said, all right, here we go. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to end up going with these guys. And you know, we were chatting so much. Storms started brewing. You know, we could hear the thunderstorms in the background. You know, some Thai people were cheering us on. And then we kept passing this girl named Pupaya. Her name, P-U-P-A. I can't even pronounce it. But shout out to you if you're going to listen to this. She was a beast. And then I saw a girl from the last course and I gave her a big hug. Then I saw some people I had worked out with at the lab. Uh, some of the people like the husband and the wife. And I helped her pick up a boulder and, you know, go the other way. She's like, Arsenio, so thank you. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. All these things, man. I saw quite a few people on the course. Um, so I continued running with these guys. And towards the end, it was like, dude, I'm just falling apart right now. At that point, I'm through. I'm going through so much pain. Honestly, I think I was packing a little bit of pounds. Uh, I see it in my stomach. Uh, and I'm just really disappointed because I couldn't even finish so many of the obstacles towards the end. After the AKM mark, I couldn't finish a goddamn thing. Not only that, but I didn't even want to do the burpees. Like, I had no will inside of me to do that. I just wanted to finish. So that medal that I'm going to take with me today and show some of my students, I'm going to tell them, did it, when you go through these things in life, do you give it 100%? See, living here in Thailand, I've given it 100%. People have said, you, the black man, all those bullshit-ass comments. But it doesn't matter. But when I'm going through that physical pain, I just felt like I didn't give it my all yesterday. And then that's what I was just so angry about in terms of myself. Because here it was, we were on the last obstacles, we were doing this, we were doing that. <clears throat> I got, like, you know, my shirt, you know, we took some pictures and stuff like that. And, I mean, it was awesome. But at the same point, or at the same time, I feel like that was my worst defeat in all of my health. Like, yes, it was the track and field, not being prepared, you know, my hamstrings tightening up, going over the hurdles, and me getting a 50 goddamn second mark on a 300 meter intermediate hurdles. Yes, it was that. But yesterday, I just felt like I didn't have it in myself. I do believe that I wasn't able to establish that rhythm in the very, very beginning and numb the pain. But then when we were able to get in the water and I started running with my boys, I said, okay, here we go. I'm going to establish myself. That's it. I'm breaking away from these fools. And so I did. They finished probably about 30, 40 minutes later. 
And I was like, no, I'm not going to sit here and wait for you guys. I am not a goddamn parent. And so, <laughs> I mean, what, what can we learn from this, though? This is what you always have to think about. When it comes to life, it comes to <clears throat> going through physical pain, mental pain, psychological pain, spiritual pain, whatever it may be. It's all about improvement. See, we can never be perfect, but we can always improve. So how can I improve going forward? Well, you know what? I'm enough sna- like slacking off. I'm done slacking off. Like, I'm probably not even going to have notifications on, on my phone anymore for the next two months until my, my uh, and I'm probably going to switch the race from a Spartan Super and KL to a Spartan Beast because I talked to the organizer of the race. He said, uh, well, you know what? If it's part of this APAC series, you should be able to do the sprint in one country, super in another country. It doesn't matter as long as you do all three. And I'm like, dude, but the thing is, I don't remember it being an APAC series on the last Spartan, uh, the Malaysia race. So now I'm just like, okay, well, what should I do? So I'm, th- I'm contemplating right now. If I do the Beast in July, I'm going to have to bust my ass three days a week and develop that physique that I used to have. Because when I did that Spartan sprint last year in Malaysia, I mean last year, last month in Malaysia, I stormed through that bad boy. I stormed through it. Yeah, I mean, at, towards the end, I couldn't do the monkey bars and do this and do that. But, I mean, I, re- I felt so great after the race. This race, I felt like I didn't accomplish a goddamn thing. Yes, I'm sore today, but you know what? It's time to get back on the grind now. If that means signing up for classes, okay, let's do it. If that means busting my ass in the morning and saying, okay, well, I can't do a podcast, can't do this, can't do that. First thing first, 30 minutes of absolute hell. Let's go get it. I'm going to have to develop that will again like I used to have probably a month ago in, you know, in February and Mar- January and December and everything. Because over the last month, I probably did two classes and I did not push myself. I didn't. And then that resulted in a catastrophic failure such as what I endured yesterday. So are you guys content? Those of you are pro- who are probably going to listen to this and you know what? This goes the same as life too. Are you content? With what you have done in the past. Are you content with what happened yesterday on the course? Are you content with everything in your life? Do you feel like you gave everything, your all, all the will you could? And what is the why power behind all of that? Because if you don't develop that, you're going to suffer and you're going to fall apart and become part of that failure and that suck-ass group that probably is about 6 billion people on this planet. Nah, probably about 6.9 billion. There aren't that many people who are pushing themselves on a routine uh, basis to, to become successful in whatever category it is. So keep that in mind with you today. I do believe that I'm going to continue developing in all areas of my life. Things happened yesterday. And, you know, I evaluated, okay, so, Arsenio, those guys that you went with, are you going to go with them again? Fuck no. Okay, excuse my French. Uh, Are you going to slack off anymore? Fuck no. Excuse my French. Are you going to do it? I already answered all the questions, and now I'm putting forth the action. And so now I'm going to go into another phase. Um, Not on this podcast. I'm going to go into another one on another podcast because a lot of things were thrown at me yesterday. A lot of things. And you know what? 80% of my unhappiness was because of a particular individual or a couple of individuals saying, oh, well, no, that's not good enough. And I'm saying, you know what? Bye. And I blocked them. That was it. I do not want to work with people like that anymore. And so these phases, man, are you when you're dealing with stuff like this, you really have to break it down. And you know what? That's what I'm going to do, of course, with the Dale Carnegie book on my next podcast. So, guys, stay tuned for that. And as always, this is your host, The Arsenio Buck Show, daily podcast, as always, on personal development and other things. If you guys want to tune in, available on Apple Podcasts, not Spotify just yet, but Stitcher, all these different things. So, you guys, like my Facebook page, The Arsenio Buck Show. And again, man, thank you guys so much for your, I guess, for your ears. This is your host, Arsenio, over and out.